He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Let's check out some questions regarding gas stoichiometry. So the first one, we have this balanced equation here, and we want to find out which of these four options is true. So this is a question about stoichiometry, and we also need to know something very specific about ideal gases. So we may want to check out the ideal gas uh, tutorial of mine if, if you're not sure where to, where to go with this. And the second question asks, what volume of hydrogen gas will be consumed at 273 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere in obtaining 21.6 grams of elemental boron from the reduction of boron trichloride by hydrogen? So again, we're going to need to know a little bit about stoichiometry as well as about ideal gases, and we will have to be able to write out that equation. So uh, check out a few tutorials of mine if you need some help, and when you're ready, give this a try. So for this question here, there is one bit of information that we did need to know. We need to know that any ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure occupies 22.4 liters per mole. And so we did need to know that, and this will be the case for any ideal gas. Remember that the identity of an ideal gas is irrelevant, right? We treat them as uh, dimensionless points. It doesn't matter what the compound is or what the gas is. We just know that any ideal gas, we're saying that one mole of that gas will occupy 22.4 liters. So that's very important because we're going to be able to do very simple stoichiometric calculations using that value instead of using the ideal gas law over and over and over again. So let's go through these options. The first thing we're asking is, uh, is it possible that 11.2 liters of hydrogen is produced at STP for every mole of HCl that is consumed? Well, looking at the stoichiometric ratio, we're seeing that six moles of HCl will be involved in order to produce three moles of H2. So that means however many moles of HCl we start with, we're gonna get half as many moles of H2. And so if we're saying that we're starting with a mole of HCl, we should get half a mole of hydrogen gas. And indeed, 11.2 liters is half of 22.4 liters. So it is true that for every mole of HCl, we will get half a mole of H2 and half a mole of H2, just as with any other ideal gas, will occupy 11.2 liters uh, at STP. And so that actually is the answer. We're already done. We got that answer there. Let's just quickly uh, take a look at each other option to make sure that none of those uh, will be the case. Uh, option B says six liters of HCl is consumed for every three liters of H2 produced. Now this one we know is just not going to work because HCl is not an ideal gas, right? That's hydrochloric acid. This is an aqueous species. So we're not able to apply uh, this rule uh, about 22.4 liters. That is for ideal gases. So that one's not going to work. Now let's look at C. 33.6 liters of H2 is produced per mole of aluminum for any temperature and pressure. And uh, this is not going to work because this aspect regarding 22.4 liters per mole, that is specific to standard temperature and pressure. So it is only under these conditions that we can use this. So C is also not going to work. D, 67.2 liters of hydrogen is produced per mole of aluminum at STP. And so now let's look at this. We have a two to three ratio. So that means for every mole of aluminum, we should get one and a half times that, right? We need a th uh, three halves that many moles. So if we have one mole of aluminum, then we should be producing 1.5 moles of hydrogen. And what would 1.5 times 22.4 be, right? If we have 22.4 liters per mole, then one and a half moles of H2 should be 33.6 
liters of H2. So that is what we would expect. And so option D is not that. It is not showing the correct number. So that's why D is incorrect. So as it turns out, A is going to be the answer uh, as we, uh, for the reasons we discussed uh, at the beginning. Now moving on to the second question here. We know that we are going to be obtaining elemental boron from the reduction of boron trichloride by hydrogen. So we need to take that sentence and make a chemical equation out of it. So boron trichloride, that's BCl3, and then we have H2, right? Uh, we, are re we are reducing boron trichloride with hydrogen, that is H2. And from that, we are going to produce boron. Right, the reaction is going to produce elemental boron, so that's just B. But we also have H and we have Cl, so that is going to produce HCl. So there is our uh, chemical equation. We also need to balance that chemical equation. So if you need help with that, I do have a tutorial on balancing equations, but this one is pretty straightforward, and we find out that if we balance everything, we get 2, 3, 2, and 6 as the coefficients for the balanced chemical equation. So now that we have this, we're ready to do stoichiometric calculations. So let's take the information we have. We have 21.6 grams of elemental boron. So we're going to want to convert that into moles. Remember that moles, that's how we do stoichiometric calculations. So 21.6 grams of boron times one mole over 10.8 grams, that is the molar mass of boron, that gives us two moles of boron. So we're trying to get two moles of boron and we want to know how many moles of hydrogen gas are going to be needed in order to get that many moles of boron. And so what we find out is because of this 3 to 2 ratio here in the balanced uh, chemical equation, we need three halves as many moles hydrogen as the moles of boron we're trying to get. So two moles of boron times three moles of hydrogen over two moles of boron, that means we need three moles of hydrogen in order to get those two moles of boron that correspond to the mass of boron we're trying to get. Now, all we need to do is use this special value. Remember, we don't need to go and do a whole ideal gas law calculation. All we need to do is take three moles of hydrogen times 22.4 liters per mole, because we know that any ideal gas will occupy that volume per mole in, uh, at standard temperature and pressure, which is what we have, 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere is standard temperature and pressure. So we did need to be able to recognize that those conditions were equivalent to standard temperature and pressure. And if we do that arithmetic, we find out that we are going to need 67.2 liters of hydrogen in order to get that desired mass of boron. So A will be our answer. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.